Stephen Smith, good morning. It's still just morning. The fans want a repeat of the events of the 29th of December and the players indeed know what's required. They certainly do and the atmosphere's building in here and I can safely say it's the, the first time since I've retired I wish I was playing. The atmosphere's Seriously? incredible, yeah. It's incredible. Teams are in the tunnel. What goes through the players' mind at this stage knowing you're about to walk into a cauldron? The adrenaline's pumping. That's the only thing that, that I could say that, that you can feel the atmosphere building for the warm-up and the minute you walk out that tunnel the adrenaline's pumping but now's the, the moment you've got to focus on the job in hand. It's an incredible atmosphere and Ibrox is a sea of blue. Just how it should be. Stephen, one thing's for sure, this is no end of season affair. Far from it. It certainly isn't. And I've, um, I've heard a few people say this week it's a, a meaningless old firm game, but try telling that to, to any one person in this stadium and any player that's going to be on, on that pitch. And I think within the first 30 seconds or the first challenge, we'll, we'll realise what this fixture means to so many people. Just a recap of the sides. Fotheringham, Tavernier, Goldson, Katic, Flanagan, Jack, Kamara, Arfield, Davis, Kent and Defoe. And the fifth is the change keeper, obviously with Noel McGregor. He joined in the bench by Warrell, Barisic, Howley, McCrory, that's the Ross variety. And the team the third goalkeeper, he's a safe pair of hands. Candias and Alfredo Morelos. The sun's shining, a perfect day for football. Temperatures in Glasgow, around about 11, 12 degrees. But my goodness, in front of us, in a field 150 by 100 temperature is much closer to boiling point Stephen. It's incredible honestly that as I said before it's the I've not missed playing since, it, since I stopped um, last summer but this is the first occasion where I certainly wish I was on the pitch and the atmosphere is brilliant. We're underway at Ibrox, thanks for joining us are we? Where we are now and Rangers TV bringing you all the action as Rangers look to get their second victory over Celtic at Ibrox this season. It's a good early header from Ryan Jack and just refresh the shapes of the teams when the first opportunity arises if the ball goes out of play. But Rangers looking very solid and consistent in the shape that Stephen Gerrard has found in recent weeks. Stephen, and it's one that's working particularly well for them. It certainly is working, but I think the, the big thing today, I think we'll see Ryan Kent most of the play on the left-hand side up against Lustig. I think he's, he's given all sorts of trouble in the previous games. And it'll be something that they'll look to, to, to play through a lot in, in this occasion. With Scott Arfield obviously playing out, uh, more out with the right-hand side against Johnny Hayes. Big day for West Fotheringham, of course. Only six appearances prior to this one today because of the qualities and 21 clean sheets that Alan McGregor has delivered this season. But West Fotheringham a very capable and safe pair of hands. Oh, Kent charges down Lustig. He's won possession. Now he drives it this week. He gets a nibble from Burke. Free kick. And that's exactly what Ryan Kent brings to the team. It certainly does, and that's what you're, you're looking for from a manager's point of view. Within the first minute, you're putting Celtic under pressure. You're putting them, them under the press, and you're running possession, and winning free kicks in dangerous areas. It's a fantastic start from Ryan Kent. And again, Lustig looks nervous playing against him, which is a good thing for Kent. Considering he's got 75 caps, for Sweden, Lustig, he's another player who's been very fortunate, the lack of real pressure on Celtic defensively in recent seasons. It's all changed now. Over the ball, skipper, Tavernier. He's dismissed Ryan Kent to go and look for scraps. Tavernier's looking to deliver. 16 goals for the season for the Rangers captain. Rangers moved the box. Back door is Goldson and Katic. It's fired in the area. It's in! Tavernier! What a great start! Beyond being less than two minutes on the clock, the ball beyond being is Rangers one, shutting now. Incredible, absolutely incredible. What a delivery from James Tavernier. It's what you look for from a set piece in that area. Deliver it to the back post area with a chance at going in, and it certainly does that. Misses everyone and goes in at the back post. Fantastic from Tavernier. Great start from Rangers. 17 goals for the season for James Tavernier. This game just an absolute changer in under two minutes and look what it means to the management team. But again, you get back to the, the initial press from Ryan Kent to win possession and put Lustig under pressure right away. It's the, the message that they got from the manager in the changing room and he's carried that out to the tee. Fantastic start for Rangers. Now, slow it down. Address the haggis by way of the ball, like Rabbi Burns. Just keep the ball. It's easier said than done. I yeah. tell you, in this atmosphere, it's, it's a lot easier said than done. But you can see a lot of the players now, they're taking their time, they're doing the right thing. Fotheringham's taking his time over this, this by kick, which is the right thing to do, just to try and settle the, the adrenaline a little bit. But sometimes in this atmosphere, it's impossible. 
Neil Lennon looks on, not the start he was after. But James Tavernier put it in an area, looked for movement, Arfield came short, didn't get anything on it, and the movement was the one that took the attention, perhaps, of Scott Bain, and all he could do was pick out from the onion bag behind him. The reason have started so well. The have and it was perfect from Tavernier at the back of the set pieces we spoke about. It's what you look for in that area, it's flat, it's at the back, and just inside the back post, and if somebody gets a touch on it, or misses everyone that goes in at that back post area, fantastic start. Now, what can you say about James Tavernier? He's in the PFA Team of the Year. Stephen Gerrard entrusted him with the captaincy at the start of the season. It raised a few eyebrows, but 17 goals means a new record by way of goals from a fullback at any time in this glorious history of the famous Glasgow Rangers. See, you played fullback yourself. It's not easy, even if you're on penalties. It's no bit converting. It's certainly not. Um, again, he's got that technique for, from, from open play and from penalties that he's, he's got a lot of his goals from, but it's not just goals, it's assists as well. To get that number that he has from that position, it's, it's incredible. It's, um, again, you can back to guys like Sandy Jarden who did, had these numbers before and John Gregg and people yeah. like that. So, um, John here again with the press, forcing errors from Johnny Hayes. Launched out of play by Christopher Ayer. Rangers have the bit between their teeth. They certainly do, and it's um, in previous years and old firm games, I think Rangers have been playing here. They've, they've sat off Celtic a little bit the last, the last game, and then the first five minutes of this game, that's certainly not been the case, and it's exactly the way the Rangers fans want to play. They're on the front foot, and they're in Celtic's close faces, which is exactly what you want. Another throw into Rangers. Celtic unbeaten in 12 matches since Valencia on the 21st of February, and on the domestic front, they're undefeated since last time here and again he's caught switching off but Rangers so direct so full of invention and pace and desire and I tell you what Johnny he's very fortunate not to pick up the first yellow card of the day he certainly was and I think Rangers are targeting the right areas of the pitch to, to um, inflict pain and self the two full back areas are really weak today and again it's the two areas that they're, they're exploiting at this minute another free kick we're looking for another Tavernier topper. Now, he's had a word with Conor Goldston. He makes his way into the danger area. I think maybe Conor Goldston's seen something in there from the previous one that he can maybe exploit. Back post is Katic. Been picked up by Scott Brown. Wistick's in there as well. He goes near post, looking for Arfield. He's had to defend it well. I think this might be the first touch for Johnny Flanagan. And for Jack, who's been so assured since the first whistle and in recent weeks really delivering but his first Rangers goal against Celtic of course long searching delivery it's well dealt with by Mikey Johnston in the right back area at the moment Man Kamara tidy about his work in there ahead of Rogic and Kent showing he's more than willing physically as well Johnston just gets no change whatsoever out of Johnny Flanagan that's the tackle I've been waiting for from Flanagan. You, you mentioned the minute ago it was his first touch. It was actually his first tackle I've been waiting on. And what a tackle it was to, to set the tackle to stand up for the game. The Rangers moving the ball about quickly. Brown chasing shadows. Can't get anything on it. And a very cool pass back to Fodlingham from James Tavernier. Although Burt is very quickly across to try and get something out of it. Lusty arrives a wee bit late on proceedings because Kent had dropped off. Johnson pinned in in the right back area at the moment and Lustig is the work all the way back to Bain. The start from Rangers has been relentless, the, the pace of the press and how high they're pressing and they're not giving Celtic a minute on the ball and they're winning, regaining possession in key areas as they've as they done here. Arfield, started by Stephen Davis, it's out now with Tavernier. Jack just drops his anchor, Arfield makes a forward run, Defoe looking for anything in that final third. It's a bit of a buzz bomb of a delivery, but Bain deals with it under some pressure from the advancing Defoe. There's no flag. Again, it was great pace in the cross from Tavernier. Maybe a little bit too close to Bain, but again, um, fantastic delivery with great pace on it. You can see he's playing with confidence after the start that he's had. Celtic trying to get a bit of rhythm going. Callum McGregor. Again, can't get any space. Back for Ayer, who uses Simunovic. McGregor up to Edward asks Hayes to go long dealt with by Goldson it's been a flying start if for any reason he didn't join us in time for kickoff Rangers got the opener in 1 minute 40 
James Tavernier with the free kick. Here's Arfield, not a lot on ahead of him. He tries to give the slip to Hayes, inviting the challenge, because you know the next one from Hayes will incur a caution probably. Jack for Kamara, chased by Burke. Katic for Flanagan. Glenn Kamara, terrific. How seamlessly has he stepped in to the responsibilities of a ranger in midfield? It's been excellent, and I think um, recent weeks as well, they've found the right balance to play in beside them with Davis and Ryan Jack, and the three players that are really composed on the ball, and again, it's a great start from Kamara and showing composure, and also Arfield a minute ago as well, just settling that a little bit, using his experience to, to keep the ball when there was nothing on, so um, the, big, the game's beginning to settle down now after that, that frantic, relentless start. Certainly the dream start the Rangers were after. Celtic, lots of possession at the moment, but no real penetration. Suminovic again, and Lustig. Up for Tom Rogic, tracked by Davis. Spins it wide, but Tavernier reads it so well. Sixth sense for danger. Davis, what service he's given Rangers now, second time round since he got up to speed. Look, demanding the ball, comfortable, composed, absolutely assured. Again, people speak a bit bravery in this fixture of the game, going back to the tackle from Flanagan, uh, instance like that, but again, taking that ball with Kamara and Davis showing early on that they're brave enough to take possession in a fixture, this is great to see. McGregor loses out, Tavernier's on the charge. Arfield takes over, Defoe wants a piece of the action, here's Arfield again, he's away from Rogic, something might be on here, Tavernier looking for options. Over the top and movement from Kent, Arfield did well to hold it up, Flanagan now. Coming short is Kamara, still Flanagan, across for Brian Jack, can you think about it, is it on? He has to go wide, Jack reverse, looking for that half yard to get his shot away. Rangers controlling things at the moment, the tempo and the ball. Davis again for Glenn Kamara, looking for something to open up here. Celtic regroup, back with Kent, chance to drive it, Johnston. Alex to square it in again for Glenn Kamara. Jackson space, Davis takes over. Movement from Rangers is exquisite. They're shuffling Celtic all about in the final third, in front of the Broomloan stand. Flanagan has found Davis, Neil Lennon is out, a very perplexed figure inside that technical area, Kent's off and running, down by Brown, referee says it's legal, Arfield wants involved and ah, yeah, will get it away for Celtic, although Jack has other ideas, look at the pressure, has to work it back to Bain, who kicks for touch effectively, wonderful pressure on the ball from Rangers, a towering header from Katic, gets the ball straight back into Celtic territory, here's Kent again, very unfortunate, there is no flag, or rather there is no... Now well, Ryan Jack so quick to spot Defoe in the traps and he was ready to hit the accelerator and the far side assistant Dugueros brings things to a momentarily halt as offside against Defoe but the term you used moments ago there, Alan McGregor looking on from the stand with Lee Wallace uh, the start range have made, Stephen, sum it up It's outstanding, it's honestly 10 minutes of football that a manager before the game you would, you would dream of in a game like this and they've showed everything, they've showed the first to the ball every individual battle, they've won every tackle but not just that, they've been composed on the ball and they've used it really well so to be honest, Celtic don't look like they know what's happening in the first 10 minutes so hopefully that continues Stephen Smith, our expert summariser today on Rangers TV Celtic coming forward, ball in the box, dealt with again by Katic. That's just what you want from your centre backs. If under pressure, take no chances. Knocks it out of play. Celtic a little bit of territorial advantage for the moment. They certainly do. It was a good decision for Katic, just clear the danger and uh, regroup and reset your shape. That looks like a frill throw. Very early. You see them given the ideas. Hayes gets away with it. Davis again, quickly to launch it away. Minovic. I saw him in the tunnel having a chat with Borna Barisic and Niko Katic, of course, the Croat connection, pretty much. Johnson, who led the line here in December, operating wide today. Oh, and Edouard loses out to the combination. Katic fancied it too. What about that effort? Audacious. The whistle had gone against the combination of Katic and Davis as they stopped Edouard. Katic not hearing the whistle, fancied it. Dave, um, David Beckham-esque from the halfway line, accounted. And again, the pressure on the ball from Rangers is absolutely... The hunger, the appetite it is beyond words at the moment. And again, we spoke about the, the, there was nothing to play for in this fiction, it was meaningless. I think anybody that's watching the first 12 minutes will, will realise that every single player on that pitch has given everything. And um, As I said before, it's a fantastic start from Rangers and they have to keep it going. And of course, Neil Lennon wants the job. It's game 12 in his second time round. As Fotheringham again invites Burke to come along, but he's comfortable with the ball at his feet. And 
Rangers for their back in the side today. Again, from Celtic's point of view, they would have been expecting this. They knew it was coming. Yep. Um, and again, it's so hard to deal with when, when a team plays with that aggressiveness and that, that press and that intensity. It's so hard to play against them, even though Celtic would have been expecting it in the first 13 minutes of the game, not been able to do anything about it. To recap, the free kick was all about the design of Ryan Kent closing down. Mikel Lustig won the free kick, Tavernier dispatched it beyond Bain. 1 0 in favour of Rangers, 12 minutes now played. There's Brown. Now oh, we got that one wrong, he went to the angle it inside John Flanagan to try and release Johnston. It's all the way through to Wes Fodringham. Fodringham's last appearance, the 20th of February. 5 0 victory against Kilmarnock. Six appearances for the season up until today. Wes Fodringham. That, that press and that intensity forces people into making mistakes. And you see a simple pass with Scott Brown there, a simple ten yard pass, he plays at five yards alongside the, the, his players. So when you play with that pace and that intensity, it forces opposition into making simple mistakes. Again, just how fluid Rangers are, we're now seen to force a drift wide. Arfield comes straight through the middle. Katic comes across, Burke takes it in his stride, fires it into the danger area, and Goldson again keeps it simple. With the 30 40 yard clearance on their goals to the 53rd appearance of the season, a four year signing in the summer. Very composed, very good value, I have to say. Looks that way. From right. It was an area that Rangers had to strengthen. Um, I can see the, the, the goals conceded columns improved dramatically, so you can, um, you can see the manager yeah, bought corner the goals there. He certainly helped that. Celtic have possession in these areas, the, the player that need to watch is Tom Rogic. Edward drops off, McGregor gives chase, Tavernier stays goal side to good effect. Yeah. Looking back to the point, but they, they can't let the ball get into Tom Rogic's feet anywhere around the box, he's punished Rangers numerous times before, so they have to be very switched on when Celtic have got possession of the ball. Tom Rogic, 35 career goals for Celtic. And that one, Driss Harmonson behind. A good chance just to draw breath at this stage and remind you of the starting sides. Rangers with one change only. That's Fodringham coming in for the suspended Alan McGregor. Neil Lennon went with three changes for Celtic today. No Forrest, no Tierney, and he's away, as they say. He's decided to head back to France. So Celtic are Bain, Lustig, Sumanovic, Ayer Hayes, Brown, McGregor, Burt, Rogic, and Johnston, Edouard. And for the famous it's Fodrium, Tavernier, Wilson, Katic, Flanagan, Davis, Jack, Kamara, Arsenal, Defoe, and Ryan Kent. PFA Young Player of the Year, Ryan Kent. He's cleared time so well. And he's got to keep the pressure on Scott Arfield, leading from the front. And Defoe having a wee bit of afters there with Simunovic, being the change of direction. In search of Edouard. Davis just backs into him, claims his territory. Kent picks it off. Davis shows for it and gets it. He just crept into that pocket. Now Kent a chance to go beyond Johnson, who's to double up with Lustig. Lustig doesn't want to know. Kent amazing his way forward. He's gone beyond Rogic. Rogic tracks him all the way, got a touch on it eventually. He's looked to keep the pressure on. Ryan Jack keeping it in that territory. Away by Brown, but immediately picked off by Goldson. Fires it in for Kent, Arfield's beyond him. Defoe on the left-hand side. Jermaine Defoe! Oh, and the keeper's palms are stung by the driven effort from Defoe. And Bain, he lost it in flight. He recovered well as Defoe tests his luck. And Bain gathers at the second attempt. It was a great play from Defoe. He's just looked to get that shot away in the edge of the box as soon as he gets possession. Good defending Ayer, but he feeds it straight to Davis. Davis goes down. Jack may have got a late from Ayer as well. Referee lets it go. Johnson in for Rogic again. McGregor shut down by Tavernier. Ayer plays it long. Hayes has found space in the flank. Goldson comes over into the box. Burke with a step over. Katic keeps that back door closed. Picked up again by Oliver Burke. Oliver Burke thinking about a shot. His thought was better than the execution. Still 1-0 Rangers, 18 minutes played at Ibrooks. It's a thriller in the Glasgow sunshine. It certainly is. It's been a great 18 minutes so far from Rangers' point of view. They've, they've started the game really well. And again, one thing I've noticed is every time Ryan Kent picks up that ball, 
Um, Michael Lustig just goes deeper and deeper. He doesn't want to know any time he's in possession, and there's a fear there from Lustig every time um, Kent gets the ball up. So the message to the Rangers players would be just get the ball to him every opportunity, give him the ball and let him drive that back for him. Uh, Jermaine Defoe got action on that shot, and just towards the edge of the box. And Scott Bain had to not just adjust his feet, there was certainly movement in the air. But Johnston, who was brought into the side today by Neil Lennon to operate as a, a more offensive player, is effectively playing right back at the moment with Celtic looking to switch their back three. I, yeah, I was just going to say, I think it looks like they've switched their back three and put Johnston at right wing back and he's at left wing back. And, and that shows you how well Rangers have started them for the, the four Celtic into a change of shape this early. Is that because of the overloading midfield? I think it's because they're getting absolutely battered, if I'm honest. They're, they're getting dominated in every area of the pitch, so the manager has to try something. Wonderful vocabulary from Stephen Smith. A chance here for Scott Arfield. Here's Jermaine Defoe. Couldn't quite work out under his feet. Down in the box. And the referee had a long look at that one there. Ayer was touched tight on Jermaine Defoe. And he looked to have hurdled his leg. The referee was well positioned. We've got a chance to see it again here. I think it's just beyond Ayer. Defoe tries to hurdle the Celtic defender. Been right to be absolutely honest with Stephen. There is contact here, um, I wouldn't say it was a penalty. Again, Defoe's looking to do what he does, he's look, looking to shift the ball and get his shot away, and there is contact, but um, I'd be doubtful that that was a penalty. Of course, he's a veteran of London, Darby's Jermaine Defoe. He certainly is, but I don't think he would have experienced an atmosphere like this. This is, this is incredible. Make a problem for him, he landed up, I think, Stephen. Just looking at the Rangers bench, Morelis would be the obvious replacement. Again, I think it was just actual contact. I think he maybe have a dead leg or um, he's clashed knees because there definitely was contact, not enough for it to be a penalty. Um, but again, it might just be a, a dead leg and I'm sure they'll be able to run that off if it is. Well, three goals in the last five games for Jermaine Defoe. Rangers won't want to lose the services of the talismanic striker. But it's the goal from James Tavernier that's the difference between the sides. He flights the ball so well, I think Bain must see it late and can do nothing about it. But, uh, uh, when there's that many bodies in front of the goalkeeper and the deli delivery's that flat and it's just inside that back post, all it takes is a touch from a defender or if nobody touches it, it can sneak into the back post and that's exactly what happened. It was, a great, it was probably the perfect delivery from, from Tavernier. to find some kind of way to kickstart their game. Rangers are just not letting them breathe. Jack cushions it for Tavernier, showing for it again, invites Davis to get involved. Kent can't gather. Launched by Simunovic, held up by Edouard. Tracked by Jack. Look at the way Rangers are hunting in packs. Terrific, although the referee awards the free kick in favour of Odsonia Edouard. 21 goals for the season for the big Frenchman, not 21 until January. But again, you can see the recovery runs from the Rangers players there, the intensity to get back and help their teammates and, and work together to win possession back. Again, I don't think it was a foul. It's, it's great to see a, a Rangers team playing with that intensity and that, that desire to go and win the ball back when they lose it. Burke, who I expect to play wide, has been asked to be the second striker effectively of Celtic today. And goals and handles him well again. But the transfer fees is eye watering 15 million pounds from Leipzig to West Bromwich Albion. As wow. it's, I think he's one of the, the players that you look at. He's got attributes, he's got pace, and he's got power. But I think technically, he's where he lets himself down. And you can have all the attributes, but if you can't control the football and you can't pass it, then um, they're being pointless at some in some players. So I think he's one of those players that, from a coach's point of view, you look at and you think you can develop him, but he's not found that place where um, he's been a regular starter for any club that he's been at. Back to Bain. We're halfway through the first half at Ibrox. Rangers, one goal to the good against Celtic. Lustig up for Edouard. Tries to go beyond Katic and Jack. They combine well to win it back for Rangers. Kamara lays it off. Lustig's in no man's land, and that was a very timely intervening header from Johnston, who has it again. Forced inside, Brown takes over. McGregor has it now. A wee bit of afters between Brown and Arfield. The game continues. Johnny Hayes, Tavernier backs off, gets something on it, Hayes starts again to try and find that half yard, that field back to his feet, offering resistance as well. 
It's great oh, feedback uh, from Tavernier and, and that area. It's an area of his game that he's really improved in and he forces Celtic to go back the way. From the edge of Rangers' 18-yard box, Hayes has to retreat all the way back into his own half of the field. Brown not happy about the attentions from Ryan Jack either. Big call from Katic. <laughs> I tell you what, if Sumenovic doesn't get that one right, Arfield Defoe ready to pounce. Kamara comes forward just to squeeze the game a wee bit. They almost take it in turns. Celtic wins a third they don't have a clue what's happening. Honestly, it's, it's great to watch from Rangers. They're putting them under severe pressure and Celtic are at sixes and sevens. And Brown again, caught by Arfield. Oh, and the referee sees that as a free kick in favour of Celtic. Kevin Clancy's last visit here was a 3-0 victory for Rangers against Hearts back in April. There's a word with Scott Arfield. Big day for the referee on his first Old Firm outing. Again, that was something we mentioned before the game even started. We noticed the needle between the two players. and Again, there was not much in the tackle. Scott Arfield was trying to play the ball and, and the two players got up and got on with it. So. Um, just a word in his ear from Kevin Clancy, which was the right thing. Scott Brown looking for time that he's been favoured with in recent seasons. He's not getting it today. Arfield caught by Hayes. How <laughs> determined that he was. And he has to be cautious here. He got a late one as well. Brown slides it up. Burt takes over. He's got Roy Geeks beyond him. Katic again. Absolutely on the money. Tavernier plays it in. Defoe gets chase. Bain doesn't know whether to stick a twist. And the flag goes against Jermaine Defoe. Much to the frustration to a capacity Ibrox crowd as the game goes box to box. I think there may be a yellow card coming on the radar very shortly for someone who might just be a wee bit late with a next challenge. Certainly will, but I think, yeah, I think the frustration comes from the linesman doesn't put his flag up straight away. I think that's the, the new rule they wait and see yep. if they get to the ball. And um, as I said, the flag was probably a little bit late, and that was part of the frustration. Goldson had to watch it all the way, get a real clean connection on it. Davis chips it up, looking for Arfield, headed away again by Ayer. Only to play. Well, you mentioned the time that Scott Brown's been afforded in previous old firm games. Yeah. I think he, he realised the last time at Ibrox he wasn't going to get that time, but he's still playing this one as if um, that's the way he's the game's going to go and it's certainly not because every time he's in, he's in possession Rangers are putting him under severe pressure and they're forcing him into making basic errors again he's almost made himself a persona as the godfather of the Scottish game in recent season he's about to be the front that's a very good way of putting it to be fair 520 appearances for Celtic 34 next month he's not getting his own way now Defoe for Arfield Look at the movement again, Defoe's taken out, Kent gives chase. Bain takes over. And again, Defoe most definitely blocked in his advancing run. Did look like he was just checked off there, he was, he was making that run into the box like Jermaine Defoe always does, and it looks as like if someone came across him and blocked that run. But this fixture the referee needs to buy the back there's so many Absolutely. things happening. Again, how many times have we seen Celtic having to work it all the way back? what happens when you get a team that are comfortable in their shape and they press at the right times you, you, you force them sideways and you force them to go back and you've done their job and on numerous occasions Celtic have been forced into doing that he's 52 in July again tentative uncertain can't find the movement that we've done pick Rangers at the moment yeah, and you can see the frustration in his area standing with his arms out and uh, just looking for options but when a team's playing in their shape and they're cutting those gaps and uh, play nice and compact out of possession, it's hard to find those gaps and it shows that Rangers are doing the right things off the ball as well. Is this block again? Oh, there's no attempt to play the ball. He knows he can't get goal side. That's the problem. I think, yeah, I think he knows that, that Jermaine Defoe's in behind him and Jermaine Defoe's first thought is to get in that box and I think he, he realises he has to bring him down to have any chance of getting there before. Cool head to Mara. Just playing once. I've never seen so much enthusiasm for possession. I think when, you, when you're a Rangers player, I think the, the games that you're playing, the commandments at home, the hearts and home, it's easy to go and take the ball. But in this environment, I know fun fixture um, playing against the team that's, that's already champions, they don't show that ability to take the ball is incredible. Kent has fed Flanagan. 
Liverpool connection. Came off down the flank. It was the detecting Johnston who got something on it. I think it shows you how well they are playing the flag. It's more of a packing threat than, than, than Michael Johnson at this moment. Ken Flanagan made a one minute appearance from the bench. Last time Celtic were in town. Davis. He's wanting it. Arthur, no surprise there. Oh, and he just fails to link with Ken. That was one from the training ground, I suggest. It certainly was, and it nearly worked, it, uh, nearly worked a treat there. It was just a poor touch from Arfield. And, uh, but you can see that the Rangers have worked on that in the training ground. And it was a great pass in from Davis into Arfield, and just that last touch let him down, and, and Kent was in. It was, it, was, um, it was a great opportunity for Rangers to, to try something in the training ground, and it nearly worked. Scott Bain, the deck in all yellow. Celtic team, Cuban sticks. A wee nudge from Jack. Rogic tries to get involved. Tavernier takes care of business. When Arfield has won the battle against Ayer. Late one from Kent dropping off his Jack. And Ayer recovers so well. The big Norwegian centre back, six foot five, sold himself early. Came back with a timely touch as Arfield looked to deliver. Again, it's a great press from, from Scott Arfield. He realised that Arfield. Uh, Chris Ayers took a bad touch and he's on him straight away and he wins possession back in a really good area. He had a half-season loan at Kilmarnock, Chris Ayers. Were you there at that time? I was, and he's a player that he's got undoubted ability, but he takes a lot of risk when he's in possession. And Again, even there, he was, he was trying to play with a, a level of composure and, and Scott Arfield just didn't, didn't give him that time. So he's someone that will give you a chance to go and win possession. That's exactly what the Rangers players are looking for with that high press. Started so well today, Nico Katic, in the one previous old firm experience. I think also in recent weeks he's Davis been up for Arfield, can't get on it, headed away Simunovic. Yeah, I think he's knuckled down. I was, I was intrigued by the terminology he spoke about the other week there. Yeah. Stephen, when he said he'd been overtraining. I think when you talk about the, the physical aspect, I think in recent weeks he's played against Dick Piazu and Cosgrove, who are probably two of the most physical yeah. players in the league, and he's dealt with them really well, so he deserves this opportunity to play in this fixture. Late win on Arfield, free kick Rangers. Ayer coming through the back, it's got Arfield. But again, you can see Celtic are rattled, even the fact that how... Um, now it's Burkis on this side, how deep he's playing next to Lustig, that's a, that's a fear from Lustig and he's, he's trying to get protection from the, whoever's playing in front of him, whether it be Johnson or whether it be Burke, he's trying to get that protection because he knows he's in, he's in all sorts of trouble when, when Kent gets possession. And just have to keep getting it, he wins it, he's there. Bolton has gone long at the instruction of James Tavernier, John Flanagan has instructions to mind the shot. We can expect an aerial delivery, Stephen. I think we can, I think in recent weeks as well, with goals from uh, Goldson and Cartage as well, so they're a real threat from set pieces. Flighted in by Tavernier, Goldson's there. It was a telling touch from Brown, corner Rangers. He certainly had to get a touch on it because Goldson was lurking in behind him um, in a really dangerous area, but again, it's a chance for Rangers to load that box and, and put a ball in there with, with good pace and good quality. Well, Goldson's got four goals for the season. Rangers have the corner, we're just 30 minutes already. Shot away, turn around, and it's Kent in the corners. Late run is Goldson, coming from back to front, and hung up just under the bar, and a comfortable take for Scott Bain. Rangers opening the scoring, 1 minute 40. Today, James Tavernier claiming his 17th goal of the season. Played in every Premier game this season, James Tavernier. He was given a bit of a respite in a home match against St Mirren way back in August and then he took him off the bench in that one but other than that, what a terrific campaign for the Rangers captain I think as, as a manager as well, we need players that you can trust him to play week in, week out and sometimes two games a week, obviously in the European competitions as well so uh, James Tavernier, that was a fantastic season I'm just surprised it wasn't nominated for any of the Premier League awards Brown exchanges again with Rogic as Arfield tracks it in, Celtic get the free kick, dangerous territory. Stephen Davis quickly across to close down Oliver Burke, just momentarily late, allowing Burke to get a touch. I 
initially thought he had actually played the ball, but he was a little late. Um, Kevin Clancy gave a free kick, but this is a, a dangerous area, and Rangers need to be switched on and defend it well. Callum McGregor is over the ball. And the combination of Simunovic and Ayer. And Rustic have all gone long. Be the first test of the afternoon for Rangers' second string goal for the West Fodder, you know. Shade is inside that 18 yard box. It's a decent delivery too, or rather it's not. It's there to be attacked, but no one made a real drive or desire to go in the end of it. But again, it was in a dangerous area, and it was probably a similar area to what the one that yeah. Tavernier scored from, and, and you can see why the, the you just got a coach few mistakes. Yeah, if you get it inside that back post, there's always a chance. Body language, make your own mind up. I think that tells you everything you need to know about the opening uh, half an hour of this game. I think the, the manager has been frustrated, and that's, that's partly down to Rangers. Rangers have, Rangers have caused that. They've played really well in the first um, 30 minutes of the game, and they've done everything that, that Stephen Gerrard would have asked for. Quick makers odds going into this one today. Rangers are 2 to 1. They draw it 9 to 4, and Celtic 11 to 8. As the favourites, and really bet to do so responsibly. Rangers haven't been beaten other than 2 0 in the cup we played to Aberdeen. Rangers have yet to be beaten by more than two goals all season. Kamara for Fanny. Kent's on the move. Rangers have picked up every second ball. Kent is giving the slip to Lustig. Kent fancies it, tugs it short though. Well, he just chokes the final effort, but he'd only won in 10 after he'd taken a touch. Skin Lustig effectively, just pulls it short of the target. But again, it's, it's Kent up against Lustig and he's, he's causing him nightmares. If we have a nightmare tonight about Ryan Kent, he comes inside that time and he's got the right to have the shot. He takes a fantastic first touch and um, just poor execution with the final shot. Over the top, Edouard has found a pocket of space. Touch deserts him. Whoa, there's action inside the 18 yard box. Edward not happy about the attentions of Connor Goldson and Connor Goldson protecting his goalkeeper. And Edward still trying to make something out of nothing. Kevin Clancy will want to work with both players. We've got a chance to see this again when the director just rewinds. I don't see much wrong with Goldson. Edward probably frustrated that he didn't get the touch that mattered after he'd got between the two Rangers defenders. I think we'll see it again here. I think it's probably just a general frustration in the game that he's not had as many touches as he would like. If there's any decision to be made, it's a free kick for this. But again, that's, that's what I'm speaking about. I think that's just a general frustration with the game that he's not had many touches in the areas of the pitch that he'd want to play in. And, um, that's down to Rangers um, positive play and aggressive defending as well. So every time the ball comes in, goals in or cartage are first to that ball. Flanagan has it. Flanagan, sorry, Fodring has it. Is it enough for defenders? Stephen Davis again just launches it back. And you know West Fodring is comfortable with the ball at his feet. Searches out Flanagan who can keep it in play. Just over eight minutes in the first period of nine. I don't recall the ball being dead any time in the, the first half. With no introduction of the physios for either side, the game has just been well. There's a, 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 an injury for the four. Other than that, the game has been played at a million miles an hour. That's what this fixture sort of usually is as well. It's always a million miles an hour. And, uh, again, it's a credit to both players' fitness because it's a really tough fixture to play on. Jack and Hayes with a bit of afters and Tavernier goes short. That allows Burke to travel. Kamara comes across to close it down. Hayes delivers and Goldson again blocks the delivery. Stopping at source. That's the call. Goldson delivers. It was great play from Kamara as well. He realised Tavernier was out of position and he just shifted across to that right back area and gave Goldson a bit of cover and let him go and press the ball and stop the cross, which, which he had to do in that situation. One nil Rangers. Corner Celtic. Again, they send the big guns. Danger area. So I don't McGregor, but the referee not happy of what he's witnessed inside the 18-yard box. The Katic and 
Semenovic. There's a lot of pushing and shoving going on in there. There's going to be five or six players. The boss is probably about five fouls in each situation. So my, my attention has been drawn to the near post where there's a wee subplot going on between Burke and Jack as well. You can see there Celtic players are trying to walk the ball, but not give them Rangers players a chance to, to man man. So they're spreading the ball as delivered. The referee, just as I said, the game had any stoppages. The clock is stopped for the moment. McGregor again, I'd like to see somebody on the back post. Thank you, Stephen Davis. He must have been missed it. Here's McGregor. Still not clear. Katic will just launch it. And just defending in numbers. Hayes for Brown. Tries to draw Rangers. Launches it long. Well, Celtic have still bodies forward. Scott Brown is the ball to nothing. He's effectively played there. Because he's got 30 yards ahead of him. Take it in a bit. Try and move Rangers about a bit. You defend these diagonals all day long. That's exactly what Rangers would have wanted Scott Brown to do, and he pulled right into their hands. Danger here. Katic again. The ball had been delivered in, but Katic climbed so well. Towering over Burt. Heads it in for Kamara. Half time, five minutes away. Lustig, touch tight on Kent. Kamara in cruise control. Great play from Kamara, great composure, but when he was driving forward on the previous occasion with the ball, we've seen Stephen Gerrard screaming at him to give the ball to Kent. He wants Ryan Kent to get the yeah. ball every chance. Arfield backs off, it allows Ayer to step out. Ayer comes back to support Burke again. Katic again. In combination with Davis. Oh, Kent. Well, he invites Lustig to get touch tight. Just lets the pace of the ball go beyond him. But... This is a contest and a half for witnessing at Ibrox this afternoon. But getting no change whatsoever, whatsoever out of Nico Katic. And it's a very animated Steven Gerrard. He knows you cannot let standards slip. You've set the tone of the game, keep it going. Defoe. Lustig may have got something on it. Brown drops a shoulder, gets away with one in front of the referee. McGregor wide for Hayes. Second goal looking so dominant that they deserve a second goal. I think that's, that's what his worry will be as long as it's only one they need to go on the ruthless and get that second and kill the game. Callum McGregor, Suminovic. Again, Rangers, they forced him another 40 yards back. What was they doing with the penetration? Hayes, Jack comes over to close him down, launching the ball, meet and drink to Goldson. I think one of Celtic's strengths is they always play through Scott Brown and they always play through uh, Callum McGregor, but Rangers aren't giving them that opportunity because their midfield press is so good. Just for five, yeah. so you can see for that passive with Scott Arfield's touch tight with, with Callum McGregor yep. and Jermaine Defoe's dropping Scott Brown, so that, that's their, their go to pass every time and every week it usually works, but in this situation it's not. So they've shifted things about again now. Oliver Burke is operating wide right of the front shape and Mikey Johnson has gone left, which that will be a bit restrictive can I suggest for Hayes to, who's been getting down the line, and McGregor, asking different questions of Rangers as Johnson gets it now, McGregor on the overlap, Jack with a touch and again gets a, a nudge from McGregor, but he anticipated the ball going in behind and Ryan Jack quickly over ahead of McGregor to win it back for Rangers. It was great from Ryan Jack matching that run. Yeah. Which is a midfield player, it's a really difficult thing to do is go back the way and, and match the, the forward thinking midfield players running and Ryan Jack did it really well and recovered this race and managed to win the free kick for Rangers and just settle things down again. If you enjoyed our pre-match interviews with all the movers and shakers from Rangers Football Club, uh, we continue through half time today. Of course they're all available on demand on Rangers TV with full interviews with managing director Stuart Robertson, manager Stephen Gerrard, director of football Mark Gallagher. And through half time today, we also have head of the academy taking part from here's Tom Rogic. Terrier like Kamara, Lustig pops at central, laid off Edward. Rogic again gets it, looks to introduce McGregor. Jack tries to close him down, McGregor plays it wide. Here's Johnson again, Tavernier across. Corner Celtic. It's good for Tavernier again, good defensive play, 1v1 against Johnson, who's quite tricky and we um, can move the ball and shift it and get crosses in, so it's good. Good defending from Tavernier, Rangers need to regroup defend the set piece again to Celtic ball look to get that block in as they did before. Three minutes plus stoppages. The first half remaining at Ibrox with the scoreline sets Rangers 1 Celtic nil. 
corner to be defended. Another shape for Celtic to take up. It's in the box and again, Katic. Absolutely terrific clearing header. Kamara again, just make sure that Celtic can keep the tempo in the game. Following the throw in. Apologies, the sun over Ibrox has shaded the goal frame protected by West Fodringham, but it was a really commanding header from Katic. It was, he managed to get some good distance on as well, if you go and put out for a throw in, which was, which was good to see. Yeah, wide to yeah. Valen, right into the pack. Here's Hayes again. Overcooks that one. Chased by Lustig. The reaction the fans tell you how successful or otherwise that was. I think we've got Arfield playing a little bit narrow on Callum McGregor. It's given Johnny Hayes that space on the left hand side. To, and Rangers seem quite comfortable there. They, they seem as if they're, they're happy with Johnny Hayes having the ball, which um, is something that they've obviously worked in training to let him be the one that, that gets possession and put the crosses in. Stephen Smith, our expert spotter on Rangers TV today. Effectively, we're seeing Celtics at least a third shape of the afternoon. But that shows you that what Rangers are doing is working. Um, when you're a full back and you see you're up against Johnson for the first five minutes and he moves after five minutes, you know you're doing your job. When you see when you're Ryan Kent and you see Lustig starting at right back and then moving the right centre half, you know you've got worried and um, you're causing them problems and just trying to find solutions, but um, so far in the first half they haven't been able to find that, that solution that's working for Celtic. Well, if Neil Lennon turns to his bench, he has Jeremy Tolia, Neil Beaton, Scott Sinclair, Olivia Char, Philip Nankovic and Anthony Rawson to pick from. Doris Doris is the change keeper. Looks almost like the end of the road for take off it. It's Celtic you would have to think. It hasn't featured for such a long time. And of course, it could be all change again with the appointment of the new manager. Edward has got it. Wants to give in the little bit tavern here. Read it, positioned himself well, won it, fires it long, looking for Defoe. Defoe may have the hand on Lustig. Let's it go off your central. It's Ryan Kent, he might let one go from here. In for Scott Arfield, still Arfield! Own oh, bravery from Bain. Well, Arfield just kicked himself one side so well. We're all expecting Kent to uncork one from there. Lays it into the path of Arfield. Wonderful trickery from Ryan Kent. Arfield holds his line, his touch is true. He goes beyond the defender and it's Bain to the rescue. Uh, I think we stick on the lights half again at Ibrox. He's gone down, he lasted 45 minutes only in December. Is that the white flag we see from Mikel Wister? I think it's a white flag again. Um, there looks to be nothing in that, and I think it's just down to Ryan Kent causing him all sorts of problems, and he just looks like he doesn't fancy it, if I'm being honest, and it looks like he's waving that white flag, as you said. One additional minute to be played in this pulsating first half. Now, being quicker is Arfield threatened. Again, as Kent drove inside there, the first thought was have a shot, but he managed to pick the right pass, and it was um, it was unlucky from Arfield, it was good in terms just to try and take that touch. Um, but Celtic defended it well, but now Rangers have got again, I get a chance to put the, the delivery in the box from the corner. The unknown Leicester defender, Philippe Benkovic, is the obvious replacement. I'm not sure if we're going to get this done before the turnaround. The referee again has stopped to watch, Rangers have the corner, over the ball is Ryan Kent. Lustig is walking off rather gingerly and no sign of Celtic getting a, a, a substitute in the track seat off. Here's the corner, Kent delivers, Goldson! Oh, and it kisses the stanchion behind the goal. Again, Celtic like rabbits in the headlights. Goldson winning his header. It was really unlucky from Goldson, he's actually under a bit of pressure from Simunovic and he gets good contact on it and it just sneaks over the top of the bar, but again, Rangers are a real threat from set pieces with Goldson and Katic. The energy from Kent is terrific. Quickly throwing down Simunovic. Again, you can see here, Scott Hapu's quite happy with Johnny Hayes being on the ball in these areas. Celtic down to ten men for the moment as the half-time whistle blows at Ibrox. The skipper, well, he stepped up to the plate yet again for Rangers. Kent won the free kick off Mikel Lustig. Wonderful desire from Kent and up stepped Captain Fantastic 
to fire the ball beyond Bain from the free kick. Half time here at Ibrox, the scoreline sits. Rangers 1, Celtic 0. No changes from a Rangers perspective. So, for the remaining goal, a back four of James Tavernier, Goldson, Katic and Flanagan. The midfield dynamic of Davis, Jack, Kamara and Arfield. Kent and Defoe completing the lineup. Celtic being in goal, they started with the back four of Wustig, Seminovic, Ayad and Hayes. Wustig off, Tolyan on, holding in midfield Brown and McGregor in an offensive three of Burke, Rogic, Johnston. Edward was the focal point of the Celtic attack. In the bench for Rangers, Andy Firth is the change keeper. He's joined by Joe Wardle, Andy Halliday, Ross McClure, Danny Candias, Borna Barisic and Alfredo El Bufo. Morelos. Celtic call upon change keeper De Vries. Tolyan now deployed. Beto and Sinclair, Cham, Benkovic and Ralston were on the way for the second period. Rangers won Celtic nil. Rangers now attacking the goal to the clip and go the end of the stadium. As Jack combines with Kamara and Davis just boosting so quickly. He's certainly doing that. One thing I noticed at the end of the first half as well, Michael Beal instantly grabbed Davis and Jack and Kamara um, to, to speak them through something that obviously couldn't wait to the change room. I think it must have been something he noticed during the game and um, it'll be interesting to see if the, that something changes in the second half. You have to be alert to the Celtic change and shape accordingly, but there's the old adage, get your retaliation in first, get your shape right, impose your authority on them. It's good to see as well that how, for how well Rangers have played, that the coaching staff are still mostly thinking they can prove on and they're looking for more in the second half, which is great to see. Well, thanks for joining us on Rangers TV, the last home game of the season here at Ibrox. Stephen Smith has been an excellent addition to the Rangers TV team all season, bringing you all the input to today's clash against Celtic. Incidentally, Rangers, if you haven't forgotten, 54 times Scottish champions. Celtic just hit 50. So Burke back up, creating wide right. Tony on it right back. Here's Jack up for Kent. And when he just took a bad touch, but look at the desire from Flanagan. There is no infringement. And Arfield tries to release the full round the corner. That was a crunching challenge from Flanagan, ensuring that Celtic couldn't capitalise on the break. It's an outstanding challenge and it's exactly what you're looking for. Um, to take it's a standard ovation in this stadium for it as well and it shows how much they appreciate the, the small things as well because it's a great tackle for Flash. Fred Kamara. Well, a step over from Glenn Kamara. Tolyan gets something on it and Brown gets it away. Rogic wants time, he's tracked by Davis. Tavernier gets the touch. Stephen Davis again. Davis for Arfield. And the return pass just goes astray. What a thrilling encounter we have here in the Glasgow Sunshine. Hayes. Arfield comes back. Free kick. They just have caught him in the calf, and the free kick will go in favour of Celtic on the halfway line. The Rangers again trying to grab the game with a scruff of the neck. Is Celtic trying to find their way back into it? Yeah, again, they started in the second half in the front foot, and that's what the manager would have been looking for at half time. Start the second half the way you did the first, and they've certainly done that in the first couple of minutes. The Rangers only conceded one goal in the last five matches. There's Toya, Davis again. He set Kent off and running. Burke's quick, tries to get something on it. And then it was all about the pace of Burke. Backtracking against Kent. Again, there's that out ball with Johnny Hayes every time. And you see how, how narrow Arfield and Ryan Jack are comfortable letting him have the ball. Johnson in his fifth different role, effectively, for Celtic today. He's been wide right, he's been wide left, he's been a right back, or wing back effectively. Hinkson again just stands his ground. A sense of anticipation over in Lybrox. And then we'll take the opportunity to wish Andy Little a happy birthday. 30 today. Doesn't look it. Remember when he did though. in this area, Rangers are comfortable with Celtic having the ball there. They can't hurt them in this area, they can't score from there, so... Tolyan. Well, we know Burke's quick, but again, Flanagan, cleverly enough, just did enough. And Katic was happy to work with Fodringham. With Jack. Arfield now. James Tavernier just pushes it into an area. Trying to turn the Celtic rear guard. And there is comfortable. 
not sure about that kind of clearance though. Angles it straight to Flanagan. That's one thing I will always try and do. I'll always try and play from the back, even when it's not on. Um, and that's when Rangers have got to pounce and win back possession. And, and they did that there. Now they've, they've got comfortable possession in Celtic half. Rangers starting the second half the way they finished the first. Jack for the captain, Tavernier. When he just slips at an inopportune time as he tries to deliver, Hayes picks it up back for Ayer. 50th league appearance for Celtic Ayer today. And he's totally on one for... Wistig. Kamara again. Ensures Tullian has to find reverse gear. And now he tries to go beyond them. Slips it up for Burke. Katic again matches him stride for stride. And Burke is very quickly through the gears. But Katic, so determined, comes at the expense of a corner, making his 30th Rangers appearance to be in the Katic and he really has been commanding. It was an excellent defender, they had to be quick, because one thing Robert Burton, as we spoke about, has got power and pace, and, and Cartage matched them well, and stopped the cross, going into a dangerous area. James McGregor on the corners. He's not happy what he's seen in there again. Brown trying to make something out of nothing, I suspect. There's a yellow card. May well have been for Cartage, as we see it again here. Morning. I think Flanagan might be the perpetrator here. Looks like they're coming together in the yeah. box. And it's a yellow card for John Flanagan, has been. I think there's a wee bit of interesting chat going on there. I don't think we've asked each other if they for dinner tonight? I certainly don't think so. Another corner to be defended. You can see they just need to be, they be careful now. Kevin Clans is keeping a close eye on everything that's happening in the box, so they need to be careful and disappointed. Absolutely, that's the term. There's variation in the delivery this time. That is an exaggerated stretch to just shield the ball as it goes behind the goal kick. As we see Flanagan here, more like. just take his time over this set piece which is the right thing to do just to calm things down and Jimmy Flanagan 51 appearances for Liverpool won't be phased by the demands of this one meanwhile West Fotheringham back in the side today for the first time it's the 20th of February Kamara oh. was in early and Davis gets something on it Brown with the drag back is clever he's got Kent for company Holds him off, introduces Tolyan. Kent shuffles over to close him down. Good work from Ryan Kent. Tolyan again. Ah, terrific from Kent. It's fantastic terrific. from Ryan Kent. Um, usually with white players, they don't, they don't like doing the dirty side of the game, but Ryan Kent showed there he's more than willing to put in the hard yards to, to win back possession for his team and initially press Scott Brown and then he followed up by pressing Tolyan and again forcing Celtic into making basic errors and giving away possession. Six goals for the season, Ryan Kent, the last of which came against Celtic. Back in March. He's the full stretching Celtic. Kamara again. Just comes forward and shows. Pulls down by Brown. Brown's still not happy. Certainly not. I don't think he likes it. He doesn't like it when people play up against him and people put him under that pressure. And you can see that he gets flustered. And again, he gives the ball away needlessly under under um, no pressure and under pressure. So. Um, you can see that the Rangers players have certainly got to him today. And congratulations to the Rangers reserves who won the league this season on goal difference against Celtic. They had to win on Monday at Falkirk while well, Celtic were entertaining St Johnston. Rangers got the job done and won the reserve league title. Neil Lennon already won substitute deployed in the form of Tolian. Maybe thinking about another change. Team have just not been allowed into any form of rhythm at all. Again, Celtic are used to having everything their own way in, in, in nearly every fixture they play in, in Scotland, and I think the last two occasions they've came to Ibrox have certainly not had that. And Rangers are playing the way that every Rangers fans want them to play for a long time. 
Oh, well, wonderful layoff from Arfield after Jack got a late one from Johnson. Here's Kent getting it from Davis. Oh, he's tried to find Arfield. It was an incisive Rangers move. And Arfield just fails to gather. Look at Jack again. Terrific midfield play from Ryan Jack. Quickly over. Closing Celtic down. Again, it was a great attack from Rangers, but you notice that Ryan, Ryan Jack does a defensive side really well. As soon as that ball breaks down, he's plugging the gaps and he's winning possession back for his team. That yellow card for Flanagan, incidentally, his first in domestic business this season. He racked a few up in Europe, mind you, in the early stages of the UEFA League campaign. That does surprise me a little bit. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Look how difficult Rangers have to play for. Certainly, but that's we spoke about the, the work in the training ground about set pieces. This is also work in the training ground to, to get that shape right and, and get the balance right. And one thing Rangers have done really well is stop the ball going to Tom Rogic. He's feet and for, for three midfield players that are so composed on the ball, they're also willing to do the defensive side of the game as well. Burke gets the award from the referee from the late sliding challenge from Kamara. Jack alert to the position of the centre backs allows Goldson to clear. There hasn't been a second touch taken by the, either Goldson or Tatic when the ball's been played back into him if there's any danger or pressure on the ball at all. Well, that's what the centre halves in, in this fixture, that's what you've got to do. Don't take any chances and uh, don't give the opposition any encouragement. And Goldson and Tatic have done that really well today. In this day in Rangers history, I'm going to go back all the way to 1934. The venue was Hamden Park. As we see this one again between Flanagan and Brown, there's hands on each other effectively. Listen, it's a contact sport and there's a come together in the box. There's always going to be when there's that amount of bodies and, and the referee's seen it and he's dealt with it. He's, he's thought a, a yellow card was um, worthy of the offence and he's gave it and the referee's had a really good game so far, so um, it, was, it was the right decision from his point of view again. So 85 years ago today, Hamden Park, Rangers won Celtic nil in the Glasgow Merchants Charity Cup for something similar, and it's very similar at this stage of proceedings, 57 minutes played. Not Ibrox though. Again in shade as Tavernier plays it centrally, and at the second time of asking, Simunovic gets it back to Bain. Katic returns it with interest. Davis, terrific as Rogic threatened. Kamara gives Brown the slip and then he loses a bit of dignity as well by slipping himself. Again, it's great composure on the midfield from Steve Davis and Kamara under pressure again, taking the ball and, and picking the right pass every time. Goldson, got enough on it. Oh. Hayes was determined, but Rangers equally so when they don't have it. Out of possession today, Stephen, sum up the Rangers desire and, and the way they've anticipated. It's been outstanding, they've won every second ball that's been available, they've won every challenge, and then when they do win it, they're using the ball in the correct way as well. Brown comes straight through the back of Arfield there, just to be stretching the calf muscle perhaps. Brown caught wrong side, free kick Rangers. Arfield just checking the calf for damage. Third most appearances in the league in the Rangers squad. Stephen Gerrard's one of his early signings, I think the second signing of the summer. Norman McGregor made the first got after the second. He's been a great signing for Rangers. I think that as a manager, the one thing you know he's going to give you every single day is everything. That's all you can ask for from a player. And when he trains the way he plays and he gives you everything in every single session, you know you can trust him in a match day as well. Instruction to James Tavernier from the bench on the free kick. Katic might be the target here. And James Tavernier, well, he either fancied that because he spotted the keeper coming off the line and he just didn't get the connection he was looking for, or give him the benefit of the doubt and say it was a former. I think we'll have away with that one after this, no good goal. Yeah. Yeah. What's been made of the former Scott Bain between the sticks for Celtic today? Mutt comes across, Katic stands firm. 
up again. It's, it's Rangers winning those second balls in the middle of the pitch. They're, they might sound like simple things, but even for goalkeepers, goal kicks, they're winning the first header and then they're winning the knockdowns and um, they've been outstanding from, from the start of the match. And the Rangers have now scored 80 goals in the Premiership this season. Celtic are 75. And then there's something to be on here. Here's Ryan Kent. Oh, and he tries to lay into the path of Arfield. It was opening up for the unknown Liverpool man himself. He had the full square. He tries to feed it to Arfield and Celtic get it away. And the Rangers relentlessly win it back again. You could see what Ryan Kent was thinking there. It was the right idea. Scott Arfield had made a great run, but if he realised how much space he was in, he might have just took the touch forward himself and had the shot at goal. I think the unconventional positioning of Ryan Kent today is something that Celtic have not got to grips with at all. So I think when you look at the, the position of both wide players, the Arfield and, and Kent, they're playing really, really narrow, and it's up to the... When the full-backs from Celtic get the ball, it's up to the two wide midfield players and Ryan Jack and Glenn Kamara to get out to the ball, and they're letting Scott Arfield and Ryan Kent play really narrow and put the Celtic deepest midfield two under pressure, which has worked a treat. I think you're absolutely right. He doesn't appreciate just how much space is ahead of him. Yeah, I think he could have took that touch forward because he had acres of space to drive in and get the shot away himself. You can see the thinking he's trying to lay off to Scott Arfield there, um, but I think when he looks back, he would, he would realise he's got to take that touch forward and get the strike away himself. Katic landed awkwardly in that previous passage of play, just feeling a wee bit of a twinge in the back, but he's back to his feet at the moment. And the last thing that Nico Katic would want to do is leave the field at the moment, because he's been absolutely lion-hearted. I think that Rangers rear guard. Was first, just over 60 minutes in, I think that's the first header that Edward won today against Goldson or Katic, so the two of them have been excellent so far. Oh, that's a Power forward ball from Goldson. Arfield the layoff. Look at the desire of Jack after he spins it wide. Here's Ryan Kent again. Arfield in the four central. Ryan Kent. Now he might deliver. Wins the corner. And again, the way that Jack supported Arfield there to keep the move alive. It was a great play from Arfield. That's what you have to do, Ryan Kent. You have to give him it early and give him that chance to get a defender 1v1. And, and Arfield did that with a great left footed pass out to the wide area, nice and early. And it allowed Ryan Kent to get at his defender and get the 1v1, and he's won the corner. Twin Towers go forward. Kent did it. Some came close in the dying embers in the first half. It was not near post this time. Thumped behind by Odson Edward. Happy to see him in his own 18 yard box. £10 million pound signing. Yeah, one thing you notice about Ryan Kent, he takes corners with both feet, and that shows you when he's when you're a defender up against him, he's so hard to deal with. Here it comes again. Ron Goldson is a target, but again, good defending. It comes again at a corner. It was Simunovic marking Goldson there. Jozo Simunovic from Dinamo Zagreb. Two goals in his last two games for Celtic. 100 starts to today as Rangers keep the pressure on the third corner inside a minute fired in again keeper doesn't come he gets a fist on it knocked back in again by Flanagan he was just nudged there by Burke at a timely moment again slapped away by Bain and Flanagan just couldn't quite direct his header on target three corners in quick succession for Rangers Celtics defence stand firm they're now about to make the change looking perhaps to Sinclair to bring a bit of pace to try and find something to work on in the final third because so far they've had nothing whatsoever from Rangers between the protection from midfield to the commanding back four and Kamara so switched on again it was outstanding pressure oh. from Rangers spins away from Brown majestically oh there's a chance off field Perfection swats at me on Bain. Rangers 2, Celtic 0, 63 on the clock. Glenn Kamara, outstanding composure, great turn in the middle of the pitch, leaves Scott Brown for dead, plays a great weighted pass through the middle, Scott Arfield alive as always and finishes it brilliantly, but great play from Glenn Kamara in the middle of the pitch. Outstanding play. Outstanding midfield play from Glenn Kamara. Initially, it was a midfield three that won back possession from Scott Brown, and then Glenn Kamara shows that composure that we spoke about all day, plays that pass through, and it's a fantastic finish from Scott Arfield. Rangers' lead is doubled. Scott Arfield, it's 12 for the season. 
it's a glorious dozen for Scott Arfield. We salute you, sir. Terrific scenes at, at Ibrox today. It's like again, it's, it's thoroughly deserved for Rangers. They deserve to be two goals up, and what a great composed finish from Scott Arfield. He had work to do, and he did it with distinction. Stephen, look at the Sandy Jardin stand. It's incredible, absolutely incredible. We thought the atmosphere was great before the game, it's just been turned up a notch again after that second goal. Meanwhile, the Rangers celebrate Celtic send for Sinclair. I think it was a toss of a coin from Celtic who they took off. They could have took any of the forward players off as they've had no impact in the game whatsoever, but that's down to Rangers. Again, now Rangers now go and get the third goal. Be ruthless again, go and, go and kill them off, go and, go and show how dominant you've been because this performance deserves more than two goals. And this stadium's crying out for more as well, we can tell with atmosphere. Well, wonderful vision from Stephen Smith as Kent again drives away from Rogic. Oh, why is that not a caution? He caught him at the bottom of the ankle as well. He had a tug, first of all. I think there's also been a lot of chat this season about uh, Rangers, have they improved or haven't they improved? I think today in previous Old Firm games you've seen how far Rangers have come and I think next season is going to be a big season for Steven Gerrard and this Rangers team but it's certainly heading in the right direction. And another transfer window to get on with the fine tuning, he had to totally reinvent the squad in the summer, a bit of fine tuning and he brought guys like Davis and Defoe to the club in January, both of whom didn't have any miles on the clock as far as this season had gone by way of game time. They got up to speed and you see what they bring to the party. Listen, this Rangers job was a huge job. Um, you just have to be cautious here when McGregor tries to find Rovic in an advanced area. Yeah, just get back to the point, it was a huge job in the summer and I think it was also more about the players who have to get out of the club and, and the ones you have to bring in. And I think for the work that, that Steven Gerrard's done in two transfer windows, you see the, the improvement in the squad and the togetherness and as we spoke about it, everybody's pulling in the same direction and um, for the top all the way to the bottom. So I think you can see the improvements and I think you've got to give them a lot of credit and I think there's a lot to be positive about going into next season. Kent the space again. 3-3. Three, three. And there's Arfield the scorer of the second goal. Back for Flanagan in support, nobody's picked up his advance down the line. Kent shuffles it away from Brown. Brown has a nibble, Brown brings him to the deck. Free kick to Rangers right on the paint line. Absolutely brilliant feet from Ryan Kent. Again, drifting by Scott Brown as if he's not there. And he, he draws a foul in, a really dangerous area, and it's a chance for James Tavernier again to, to work the goalkeeper. Tav will fancy this. I think Kent actually fancied that he put the ball down, but I think captain's pulling to do right. Yeah, he's pulling right, and he's, he's decided he's taken it. That's a territory you did well for yourself in the colours of Rangers, Stephen. It certainly is, but I think with the, the goals that Tavernier scored and, and how good his technique is, I think this is a really dangerous area for him to have the, have the set piece in and he'll fancy his chances from here. Well, we've got a wonderful angle from our Rangers TV cameras just showing what could happen here. James Tavernier knows exactly what he wants. I think ideally he would maybe like it a bit further out, um, but it's still in a really dangerous area for him to go and walk the goalkeeper. I think Kent might just fancy it, there might be a bit of a decoy going on here. It is Tavernier, hits the target and it's pouched into the breadbasket of Bain. Well, he did well, he hit the target, the, ball, the wall effectively doesn't do its job. Oh, shades of Charlie Adam who did that against Celtic. It's a poor wall actually, it goes yeah. right through the middle of the wall. And, uh, he managed to work the goalkeeper, but I think again, if you asked him ideally, he would probably like it five or ten yards further back to get the ball up and over the wall. Um, but he done well to work the goalkeeper. Tavernier on target. Saved by Bain. Here's Celtic. But he's got Katic all out of the centre back area, doubling up at left back with Flanagan. He just tries to find a way to get it delivered. Jack again ahead of Rogic, picked off McGregor. Brown pops it back in again. Jack again and Kamara. Kamara slips into the path of Kent, he's off and running. Brown has to be cautious here, and Brown, well, he had to get something on that one there, and he did so, because Kent was ready to turn on the afterburners. I think 16 minutes in, I think that's the, the first challenge that Scott Brown's been successful, so that shows you how well the Rangers midfield players and the forward players have played today. Now, Neil Lennon must be wondering what the future holds. 
second time round at the moment only caretaker manager along with his assistant John Kennedy there and the fact that Celtic Board haven't confirmed his appointment suggests there may be other candidates in their mind but for the moment 2-0 Rangers we've played 69 minutes in the Ibrox sunshine and Celtic haven't had a sniff Brown can't get away from Kamara Kamara's tighter to down than two coats of paint but again it's that pressure and we're, we're still 70, just under 70 minutes into the game and you think that that intensity maybe drop a little bit um, but it hasn't and I think in the previous Old Firm game they managed to keep up for the 90 minutes so I expect nothing less from this Rangers team in this one as well Rangers top scorers in the Premiership they bring the curtain down in the campaign next Sunday the trip to Kilmarnock three o'clock kick off for that one and there's Toe Yang on for Leash to get half time Celtic about to make another change and Cham will come on for Tom Rogic and so often we've seen Rogic really deliver in Celtic's colours against Rangers today could not get any work done at all because of the close attentions of the Rangers midfielders and then Cham comes on as his replacement with 21 minutes of the match remaining I must admit before the game Tom Rogic was probably my biggest worry for um, for the opposition's point of view but the Rangers midfield three have managed that situation really well Davis again using all his experience and Cham 4.5 million pounds signing from Manchester City in 2017 not as offensive a player perhaps as Rogic but he's got previous from distance as he takes it in now loses out again to Kamara it breaks for Toyan. Jeremy Toyan. look at the number of blue jerseys effectively surrounding him uh, ring fencing Toyan as he comes forward giving him nowhere to actually do the damage I think when the chairman actually came onto the pitch I was expecting him to get to the deeper position maybe Callum McGregor to move forward one but it seems to be the opposite way around I think the champs took up the more forward position so I think McGregor can do more damage in an advanced area because he's got a natural ability off the ball to find a bit of space I think that's what he, if you asked him he would probably prefer to play but um, Neil Lennon has chosen this occasion to put in Cham one faller forward so but again get back to the point about we spoke about Celtic changing shape numerous times in the first half we spoke about their wingers changing sides they've now took for me their, their biggest offensive threat off in, in Tom Rogic it shows you how well Rangers have done defensively um, in this match as well as, as what they've done offensively it's back to Aya. The switch introduces Hayes. Ball on the channel for moving to Sinclair. What a challenge again. 49,844. 49,044 of them enjoying every kick of the ball. 800. Not quite so. Oh, Kent charged down by Toyan as he tried to release the four. Davis, look at the pressure. Clips McGregor. Free kick to Celtic. Is it getting close? Before I thought. It's funny you say that, I was just thinking the same thing myself. I think he'll still have a part to play in this game in the final 15 20 minutes. And he's warming up just now as well, so I think we're going to see him sooner rather than later. I just came back to the point before, I think uh, Connor Golson covered James Tavernier really well. I think it's the first time Celtic have looked threatening to maybe get in behind, and Connor Golson shot off that channel and made the great challenge to, to help Tavernier out. Now Sinclair with another 3.5 million pound capture. Oh, Arfield again, he's done that, yeah, he's still on his feet. Arfield and he's caught from behind by Hayes. There's problems here for the Celtic defender. It will only be yellow because he players across. Arfield again's had the treatment on occasion, is he not? It's fantastic from Scott Arfield, strength and aggression. and He's the perfect player to play in this type of fixture. If you're a manager, you, you would have him in your team in any position. Yeah, He's got so much strength, so much passion, aggression and... Um, he's forcing Celtic into making errors and he's, he's been fantastic today so far. Well, the shadow from the main stand as the sun shines brightly over Ibrox perhaps just impaired your view of the challenge of Hayes on Arfield. But the sun shines in the righteous and at the moment, two goals to the good to the famous Glasgow Rangers. Celtic, well, the lights have been just about put out. Some 16 minutes remaining. 
Tavernier on the free kicks again. Katic to four. Oh, what a piece of the action. Katic's the target. It's headed away by Simunovic. Ken, oh, we keep you up here. Well, he knew exactly what he wanted. It was a bit touch tight on him. Just tries to tee it up for the volley. And just spins off target. But Kent has been lively. Indeed, effervescent from the first person. He certainly plays with a lot of confidence. I think there, but most people would have took the touch and tried to get shot off straight away. But the, the confidence and the, the belief in his own ability to take that extra touch to try and produce a little bit of magic. Yeah. And Ryan Kent certainly got that. And again, Celtic forced to go all the way back. The Rangers have not been played through in any shape or form. I can't think of one occasion where, nope. where Celtic have got the ball in behind Rangers midfield or, or got the ball in behind the fullback. So it's a credit to Rangers off the ball and the work that goes on in the training field as well that we don't see because there is a lot of hard work that, that is involved in, in getting that defensive shape right. All-time league meetings, Rangers on 120 wins, Celtic 108 and 87 matches have ended in draws. Over the top and Sertra Sinclair goals and gets the call from West Fodringham. Good communication. Tavernier was looking for Kent. Oh, and Kent's done him. Oh, Kent comes in behind on the blind side. Right in front of the main stand assistant. And it's a caution to the Celtic defender. Well, he's late, he didn't know Kent was coming, and he was arriving with such intent that Ayer can only take him out of the play. But that ball down the, 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 the channel from James Tavernier, it was probably a 60-40 ball yeah. in, in Chris Ayer's favour, and Ryan Kent shows that pace and desire to get across the front of him and take that touch and draw the foul, and, and his change of pace is, is incredible. And another free kick. Fans want Morelos. I think going by that, it must mean he's, he's, he's getting changed. I think he's getting yeah. instruction. Meanwhile, Rangers looking for a third. Flighted in Tavernier. Kamara couldn't get anything on it. Also lurking with intent as the four. Celtic get it away. That's another great delivery from Tavernier. It's got that pace on it that we spoke about for the, for the one in the first half that, that, that the attacking players want. They want that pace on the ball, so they just need to get a touch to direct it on target to get that goal. Stephen Davis in his 23rd Old Firm game, and it shows. One thing about Steve Davis is that he's just such a good player. He's in possession, he's so hard to get the ball off. Even when you do simple things in training, like possession drills, he's, the, the ball's like a magnet to his feet, and it's so hard to get that ball off him when he shows that composure. It's one thing doing it in training, but it's another thing doing it in an Old Firm game. Yeah. Absolutely. Ten years ago, in three days, Rangers won Celtic nil. The only goal of the game came from. Stephen Davis. I remember it well. Kenny Miller across from the left hand side. Absolutely. You know, it's been a real team performance. I know we've mentioned individuals from the first whistle. Everyone has stepped up to the plate, but the, the way that the combination of the parts have come together from a Rangers perspective today, Stephen, has been terrific. It has, and it's, it's they've dominated every part of the match. And we spoke. 3 v 2. Is it the four time? Oh, denied by Bain. Follow up, puts it in. Oh, and it hits the top of the crossbar. Here's Bain. <laughs> Bain couldn't get a handle on it. Arfield just lost out as well. His Rangers threaten again. Well, Defoe denied by the block from Bain. It just shows you what you mean, Defoe. It doesn't matter if it's right foot or left foot. When he's in that area, he wants to get his shot away, and this time it was on his weaker left side, and he forced Scott Bain and he making another good save. Here's Tavernier, pops it in early, stretching his six foot five frame was Aya to just keep the danger away from Bain. Harfield intent on keeping the danger alive. Flanagan, what's the shout from Katic? Even, even things like that, the small things being first to that ball when it comes up to the halfway line, Rangers have done it all day and Celtic have had no answers. Has this been the best performance you've seen of Rangers this season, Steve? Yes, for me, 100%. Um, again, the last Old Firm game, they were exceptional, and it's hard to follow that up in the next one, but again, they've been, they've been dominant from the first minute to, to what, we're 78 minutes in. They've been fantastic. Bit of pressure on the ball from Celtic. That's the first we've seen them really apply any pressure in Rangers' final third. It was, and again, Rangers still tried to play out through Steve Davis. Um, we've shown that composure to go and get the ball. Defoe departs. 
can see he's got the standing ovation he deserves as well. He's such an intelligent player and he's had a few opportunities today and he's forced Scott Bain into a couple of good saves so he can be happy with his day's work as um, the stadium salutes Morelos coming on now and he's, he's got 10, 11 minutes to go and affect this fixture which I'm sure he will. I have a funny feeling he wants a piece of this action. He wants it badly. But one thing about when you get suspensions and stuff, it's so frustrating and um, obviously from Alan McGregor's point of view, the, the, the biggest punishment you can get is missing fixtures like this, so um, I'm sure Alfredo Morelos will be, be chomping at the bit to get involved and, and try and get that goal. 17 league goals for Alfredo Morelos, including the PFA goal of the season. And if you're a defender and you see this brute coming on now, it's probably not quite how you want the afternoon to end. Certainly not, and if I've been honest, I think for the last 10, 15 minutes, Celtic have been all over the place. I think before the game, we, sp well, we mentioned that the full-back area has been the weak point, and um, to be fair, the whole back, back four has been a weak point today, and I think the last person they want to see coming on is, is Morelos, because he'll be desperate to get that goal. Here's Hayes. Pops it beyond Tavernier and looks to deliver. Dangerous ball. Comfortably taken by Wes Fotheringham. Had a clean sheet against Celtic in December 2017. Making his 137th Rangers appearance today. But his six appearances for the season, three clean sheets, all of which have been here at Ibrox, incidentally. Well, oh, just too long for Morella Stephen, sorry. Even even going back to that cross from Johnny Hayes, he's in a dangerous area, he's in the final third, Celtic with one player in the box. That shows that Rangers are completely knocking stuff in the confidence out of Celtic, and Celtic are honestly just trying to get out of here by, by a 2 0 defeat by, by what I've seen so far. I think Celtic looking at the body language from a number of their players at the moment. They just want to hear the final whistle. They certainly do that. And again, get back to that point a bit when you're, you're somewhere 2 nothing down and goals change games. In Cham, this time gives the slip to Kamara. And again, it's a very, very poor final ball. But again, the, the body language for the players isn't, isn't great from the Celtic point of view. Going back to the, the Johnny Hayes cross, you've got one player in the box. If you get it back to 2-1 with 10 minutes to go, you never know what could happen, but you've got a player in the final third look to deliver that cross, and he's got one player to hit, it, it shows you that the confidence and the belief has been completely knocked out of this Celtic side. If you want to see more of the interviews that we've broadcast for you today on Rangers TV, which include Managing Director Stuart Robertson, Director of Football Mark Allen, Head of the Academy Tegmont Holland, and of course Stephen Jenner will be here, and all on Rangers TV on demand. And they're all very much worth watching, getting a real understanding of how this season has unfolded and the plans for the future. Rangers about to make another change. Daniel Candias is coming on. It's the end of the shift for Scott Arfield. But what a shift he's put in. 12 goals for the season from Scott Arfield. Made his 29th Premiership appearance for Rangers today. And what a shift he's given. He's been enthusiastic. He's been omnipresent. He's defended when you don't have it. And he's been clinical in front of goal. Outstanding shift from Scott Arfield. I think in the last Old Firm game that they dominated here, Scott Arfield dominated the game from the middle of the pitch. This time he's actually dominated the game from a wide area. And he's went and affected the match. And again, he further deserved his goal. And he further, further deserves that reception he's getting from the Rangers fans and the, and the congratulations for his manager and the bench. So Candias comes on, Rangers making their second change in quick succession. Great friends on and off the park. Morelos and Candias as Morelos spins it wide. Kent has to chase. Tolian tracks Kent back now for Flanagan. Charged down by Burke. Breaks into the path of Edouard, wants it back and turns from the jam. He has to be quick, but look how quick Katic is as well. Katic just has to be cautious. He loses out on this occasion. Danger. Oh, Fothering with a big, big save from Burke. Sinclair has it now. Fires it in. Goes from the clearing header. Wonderful stop from Fotheringham. Absolutely terrific. One that Alan McGregor himself would be proud of as Celtic in search of a lifeline. Fotheringham denying them. 83 played. It's a fantastic save, and that's the first time this Rangers defence looks stretched. And um, at moments in the game, you need your goalkeeper to up with big saves, and, and Wes Fotheringham did that there, there really well. And it was a great save to push it away for danger as well. So Rangers just need to regroup and, and compose themselves again in this period of the game. The ball to the Rangers box again. Is it what? Shoulder to shoulder with Tavernier and Goldson. And coming back was Jack to get something on it. 
Well, we've not seen much of Bodson Edouard, but he exploded into action. Just a, really a minute good, ago. Really good turn of pace here again behind that Rangers defence. And again, we're, we're 84 minutes in. It's the first time that Rain, uh, Celtic have threatened in behind. And um, Rangers looked a little bit stretched. And they've made a few changes. So they just need to get up to the speed of the game and regroup and, and reshape. Do you just give Candice the same role as Arthur? Do you go be more conventional? Candice might be the target here and he gets it from Tavernier. He's got Aya for company. Tries to stand it up and spin away from him. Gets the call. Go back to the point, I think he'll... he'll be a similar job to what Scott Arfield was doing. I don't think he would change too much. Here's Edouard, and it's on target from Burt. He's got the whole goal to aim for, and you look at the position of Fordham, he's some ground to cover. He certainly has. I think you look at that, it's probably a poor finish from Burke. If he puts it anywhere in the other side of the goal, it should go in because Fordham's been attracted over to the near post. So he does really well to move his feet and get across the goal. And again, he doesn't just save it, he pushes it away from danger. Scott Arfield gets the man of the match. Award from the sponsors, the legend is Andy Smiley's AS scaffolding. Scott Arfield gets the call there. Stephen Smith will confirm the Rangers' team in the match, but he's got around three minutes or so to think about that one. Stephen Gerrard still not committing to a smile just yet. I think the call there is shape. It certainly will be, but I think he knows as well. He's, he's, he's intelligent enough, he's played enough games and, and managed enough games to get now to know that, that 2 0 can sometimes be a little bit nervy if the, the opposition get that goal. So he'll just be wanting to reshape and again get back to making it difficult for Celtic to play through. It's his. management as well from Rangers, use that experience of Steve Davis in the middle of the pitch and um, play the game where you want to play it in Celtic's half, don't give them any encouragement. Almost a 4-4-2 for Rangers at the moment with Candice and Kamara wide, Kent second striker off Morelos. Celtic enjoying some possession as we hit the final four minute mark. Toyan and Cham wants it back, catch again reacts well ahead of Burke. Jack has been quietly so efficient today. Davis has released Flanagan. Morelos and Candias is ahead of him. John Flanagan, he's found Alfredo Morelos, he can't keep it in there. It might fall for Kent. Whoa, and it whistles just wide of the target. Well, it sat up perfectly for Ryan Kent after Morelos has touched the Zepsum, and he just fires it. No more than three or four inches wide of that goal frame. It was a good play for Flanagan down the left-hand side in an offensive part of the pitch as well. Usually we normally relate to the defensive side of these games, so it was a good play from him attacking down the left-hand side and Kent had drifted in and found that space and he was unfortunate with the first-time shot that just drifted past the post. Again, the effective play from John Flanagan. Stephen Davis, for me, it's been again a real case of masterclass. Kamara, a real team player, and Flanagan slotting in perfectly launches it long Davis looking for it Katic lets the flick go on but the offside flag had already been raised I think you threw that full Rangers team into a man they've been excellent I think up until previously the last couple of minutes West Foreign hadn't been called into action and when he was he's produced a big save as well so I think to a man Rangers have been outstanding and there's a legend in there, next to John Gregg, it's Dave Kegg. <laughs> <laughs> Rangers directors Andy Dixon and Mark Allen also there today. They'll be anxiously watching the clock with the rest of us, but it's been a wonderful team effort from Rangers today as Kamara shuts down Brown again. Tolyan has to hurry his clearance. Cham blocked by Davis. Candias. Tavani Rubert is going today with the early goal. Fires it up to Morelos. Morelos on the turn. Tavani has gone long. Candias plays it into the area that Tavani has trotted into. He just tries to win the. What was Brown thinking about here? Brown in front of Morelos. That's a pawn. I mean, he can't play the ball. He's tried to win something out of nothing effectively against the Fredo Bell. It's a 
total nonsense, I'm being honest, absolute nonsense. Free kick goes against Candias. Well, we know what happened the last time that pair came together. Ross McCrory for Stephen Davis, and I think this as an acknowledgement about today's performance from Stephen Davis. We've got another year ahead to look forward to witnessing the qualities of the Northern Irish icon that is Stephen Davis. Davis off, McCrory on, and he's not got the gloves on. <laughs> Again, it's a, a deserved um, reception from the Rangers fans for Stephen Davis. It's another just touching 90 minutes of excellence from him. He's in possession, he's outstanding, and something that we all knew. Um, I think when he first came up to the club, there was, there was maybe a few doubts that maybe at 33 as he passed it and, and things like that, but I think the last six fixtures have shown that he's certainly not, and he's got so much to offer, and it's great that he's been tied up for another year. Rangers have committed all three substitutes. Fourth official, Craig Thompson, about to confirm how long before Celtic put out their misery. It's 120 seconds they've already started. Two additional minutes for Rangers to get this one with the line, Stephen. It is, and I think um, again, as we see Candace just matching Johnny Hayes down the line. Great work rate. Just leans into him. The referee a long way away from the action. Awards the free kick in favour of Celtic. But again, it's in that situation where Rangers are happy for, for Johnny Hayes to have the ball. We spoke about it numerous times during the game. It's what Rangers have obviously worked on in the training ground and it's what they're treat today going by the result. Hayes to take. They have sent Mariel and Simonovic into the Rangers 18 yard box. McGregor to deliver. Fodering on the line. Rangers in the blue shirt inside the 18 yard box protecting the two goal advantage. And it comes off the back of the head of Ayer. In fact, it's Simonovic drifts behind for a goal kick. Neil Lennon looks on anxiously. His team today have not had a sniff. Steven Gerrard sets his team out to go and win the game, win the ball, do things early, play with passion, play with panache, play at tempo, and they've delivered in every element of the game. Everything about the Rangers' performance has been outstanding. Everything that the manager would have asked for from, from the training ground to now has, has been carried out to a tee. And, Every single player has contributed in, in, in a way, and it's been an outstanding performance over the 90 minutes from Rangers, and I thoroughly deserve one. And the man of the match? It's Scott Arfield. I've got to agree with the sponsors as well. I think he's been outstanding in, in this fixture. The final whistle blows! There's joy for Gerard And a lament for Lennon. Rangers 2, Celtic 0. It could easily have been 4 or 5. West Fodering a one save to make in 90 minutes. It was the skipper James Tavernier who got us going with the opener. Mark Allen, the Rangers director of football, comes down with words for Scott Arfield, and no wonder. Man of the match today, Scott Arfield's goal in 64 minutes sealed Celtic's fate, and Rangers now six games unbeaten, scoring 14 goals, conceding only one. Are you watching Scottish football? There's markers being laid down for next season. Every man Jack in the Rangers side today won the personal battles. Celtic did not get a sniff. West Fodling and goal three because Alan McGregor was suspended. Had one save to make. The last home game of the season. James Tavernier have got us going. One minute 40. Here's the management team. They know what it means. Passion personified. Stephen Gerrard was a winner as a player. He will make Rangers winners and trophy winners again. And the fans know exactly that this sensational, most successful football club in world history is very much back in the right direction. Katic outstanding today. Kamara, a player's player. The Celtic players go to the 800 fans who are in the shade. I'll repeat that, Celtic are in the shade. 
Rangers today are relentless, ruthless and absolutely on point. Rangers brought their A game. Celtic did not get a sniff. There's warm acknowledgements all round and another clean sheet for Wes Fodringham. Johnny Flanagan, the only Ranger to be booked today. But what a shift. What a team performance. Celtic leave the field. Heads bowed. Guard of honour. Rangers did not recognise anything but opponents to be beaten here today. And they were roundly beaten in style. The Rangers fans go to the... Sorry, the Rangers players go to the fans on this last home game of the season. The sun has been shining, but Celtic's lights were put out in the second minute of the match today. The gap is closing. 81 goals scored in the league this season to Celtic's 75. Tavernier will be open up today. And then the icing on the cake. In 64 minutes, a real team goal. Kamara before with a step over. And Scott Arfield, destroyer in chief. They want a shift again from Ryan Kent. We hope to be seeing them back at Ibrox sooner rather than later. A terrific afternoon at Ibrox. The game is all over. And Rangers take all three points. The scoreline is Rangers 2, Celtic 0. Stephen Smith and I will be on the case to dissect today's 90 minutes after this very, very short break. Full time at Ibrox. Rangers 2, Celtic 0.